Well, hi there, and welcome to the Acrylic Portrait Painting Challenge Masterclass, lesson number six, building up richness, luminosity, and depth in your acrylic portrait. I'm excited you're here again, and it's good to see the, the progress that students have been making um, in our Facebook group uh, via email. Thanks for sharing that with me. And in this part of our series here, in this part of the portrait, you're gonna see um, some changes taking place very quickly um, in the painting process. You're gonna see a lot of realism and depth being built. Um, so what we want to do is build on the foundation that we've already created in the first few lessons, um, where we did that realistic um, detailed sketch and then we added some initial glazes. Now we're gonna be working in more of the midtones building up luminosity and depth in the face here and we're going to call this girl Cora. Now you can call her Hope or you could call her uh, we had a, a myriad of different names that people suggested in our Facebook group. I'm going to call her Cora but you can call her whatever you'd like just don't call her late for dinner. Um, anyway uh, we're going to be building up some shading and depth in her face um, and adding you know, some warm glazes to the interior. That's gonna make a big difference. Getting some differentiation on the forehead by um, adding a glaze to the top and then allowing the highlights right in this area, the predominant highlights to really stand out. We're also gonna add some depth uh, between uh, the subject and the background by darkening the background some more. And we're also going to um, put some glazes into her hair to get some differentiation and that might finish us up for for this lesson here but um, I'd encourage you to sign up for the portrait painting challenge if you haven't done so yet it is completely free and uh, You can sign up and get everything to paint along with us uh, go to realisticacrylic.com backslash spring dash acrylic dash portrait dash painting dash challenge and when you sign up, you will get access to the welcome kit, which includes uh, the supplies list. It also includes a palette layout guide. Um, it includes the um, uh, masterclass lessons being sent to you, the gridded reference photo, everything you need to paint along with this. I'll send that to you. Um, but if you wanna go ahead and sign up, it's completely free and it's not too late. Uh, even though we're halfway through or more than halfway through the painting process, you can get caught up. You can do this at your own pace. The, the classes aren't going anywhere. Uh, so go ahead and sign up with us. We'd love to have you take part in this challenge. Um, I'm going to get started here in just a moment. Before I do, I'm going to dive in with a word of prayer um, and just uh, get God's help to be able to teach you this and ask him to help you as well. So Father, I do ask a blessing here on this class and I pray you would guide my brush strokes that you would enable me to just impart this knowledge and how to uh, paint this portrait well lord i do need your help and i pray that you would guide every brush stroke guide the words that i speak and uh, help me to communicate just the the next uh, steps here on this portrait bless the students provide for them um, i pray you grant them peace i pray you give them clarity as they paint guide their brush strokes keep them safe from sickness and deadly disease keep them strong and uh, just give them uh, creativity and time to be able to paint help them to be patient with the process and just to uh, uh, stay with it even through the challenges so I ask that in Jesus name amen and so again I do just uh, mention to you that there are challenges in this painting process um, I understand as you're painting it that you might be experiencing some blotchy areas in, in the, the portrait, you might be experiencing some areas that got too dark. And again, I want to encourage you, just let you know that is normal. Um, everybody experiences that when they try something new. And the, the idea is just to overcome, persevere, and continue just to add layer upon layer. And then to know that if you have areas that are a little dark and a little blotchy, um, you can compensate by just leaving off in those areas for a while, coming back to them later, and then our smoothing layers that we do at the end will also help to address that too. So I'll be showing you more on how, how to overcome uh, any of those issues that might arise. But for now, let's get started. And we're going to start off first by putting a layer in the background. Um, I want to get more differentiation between 
uh, her in the background, help her to pop forward in space, get some three dimensionality going. Uh, so let's take our large flat brush, it's the three quarter inch or one inch flat, and let's take some raw umber dark, just brush it off to the side here on the palette, a little bit of ultramarine blue. Let's spray the palette. Again, I'm running wood heat here in my studio, and so it is very dry. And depending on your climate, you'll have to really keep your paint nice and fluid. Makes it way, way easier to glaze. We're gonna just mix these two together, and we're making just a kind of a Payne's gray bluish color. You can see it here on my white card. I think I'm gonna thin it down a bit. Uh, just a little more matte medium, thin this down, make it more translucent. So the idea with the glazing technique, again, is to go much lighter than you think, think you need to. And initially your first glazes should be very light, but as you have more and more uh, layers on your canvas, you can go progressively a bit more opaque. Um, so I'm going to try this and see how that works. Yeah, I think that'll work well. We're gonna start in the lower right corner and cut around the girl's hair. And it's good also to have some brush strokes in different directions. If you've been going vertically quite a bit, try going uh, horizontally. And you can go a little bit at a diagonal angle as well. We can also brush a little bit of this glaze into the darker values of her hair. But always keep that wet edge and don't overbrush it. It's going to move right along here, cut around her hair. And then uh, we're going to just kind of dry brush it a little bit, drag it across here um, in that area because that's just a bit lighter. And then we're going to use more pressure and bring out more of the glaze as we get to the top. Now I'm going to load up my brush again. And I'm really going to use quite a bit of the glaze, almost scooping it up on my bristles here. I have a ton on this brush. And then I'm really going to just deposit a lot of it down here on the top. And that is going to get that area quite a bit darker. Now I bring this glaze out, not all the way. And I'm going to use some vertical diagonal strokes going in this direction. And I... I had one layer here. Let's just smooth this out first using some diagonal strokes that way. And we'll try to cut this up inside of her hair a little bit as well. I'm going to leave that be, but uh, what I wanted you to notice is how I uh, sectioned off the glaze. So right here, I brought the glaze out about this far. And then in the previous layer, I brought it out that far. And then in the previous layer, I brought it out this far. So there's actually a few different segments there. I think you can really see it now. This is one layer. This is the next layer. And then this is the previous layer. And so each time when I brought this glaze up in the background, I didn't just stop off on top of that initial layer, rather, I brought it back a little further each time. And what that does is it develops shading. It develops gradation because each layer on top of the other progressively makes them get darker. But if you don't bring out the subsequent layers, you know, on top of the initial one, you're going to have a little kind of a fluted textural, not textural, but just um, gradations. Um, so I hope I'm explaining that where you can understand it. But the idea then is just really to, when you do your glazes and you have the darker section, don't stop off that glaze on top of the other one. Um, allow your, your brushwork to fall short of that initial line. And then each time just make it fall a little bit further away from that. But again, let the, let the reference photo be your guide because um, there is an area where the value changes relatively quickly, and that is right here. So I'm not, you know, here I have this much of a distance between um, these two layers, and then here I have that much distance, and then here, you know, even less. So it, it then allows that transition and value to occur very quickly at this point. 
but then at this point it's a little more gradual and if you look at your reference photo you will see that you'll see that it you know um, has a very quick jump from almost black or a very very dark greenish grayish brown to the somewhat lighter color and then here all of a sudden it jumps very quickly to that color so um, so that is the idea. Now let's uh, do the same thing here in the lower left corner. I want to show you that same concept. If you need to mix more of the same glaze, you can do that. Ultramarine blue, raw or dark. And it's, again, the glaze is going to be a little bit more to the bluish side. I'll just show you on the white card. A little bit more to the bluish side here. But it could be the same as what you have up there, too. That would be fine. Um, so, again, we're going to stop the glaze short. Um, but I really want to pay attention within the background. Um, there is an area that's a bit darker. And it's a shape that kind of flows in like this right here. But I'm going to allow it also to cut up along the edge of, of her clothing. And so, really look at your reference photo. And study it study that background and see if you can see the shape within there um, again it's a shape that's kind of like this almost like a little peninsula that sticks out and if you can see that differentiation and value that's what we're going for that's what we're trying to achieve here so I'm going to start off just by going in the lower left corner it works better that way to start off from a corner and not in the middle because it's easier to blend that way and then I'm going to endeavor to create this shape here. I'm going to cut up along this edge. Just bring that up to her dress, her sleeve. And then I'm going to look for this little shape. I'm trying to keep this wet edge. I'm trying to keep this wet edge here. Now, this is where it can get a little tricky. But wipe your brush off. Okay, just wipe off whatever glaze you have. And now do a dry brushing technique. And just kind of feather the edge of your glaze. If it starts to set up, gets a little blotchy, just leave it be. But we're doing what we call a dry brushing technique to develop a little bit of gradation. There's other techniques too, but I want to show you this dry brushing technique to really uh, get a smoother application on your glaze. So I leave it off right there. I have that little shape there. It's just a bit darker than what I had previously. Now, let's add a glaze right up in here. That would be just to the left of her eyes. And I want that glaze to be just a bit warmer in tone. So let's take what we have and let's add a pinch of raw sienna and Indian yellow. Just kind of put it off to the side here in my palette. Pull it into the mixture. Okay. So I'm just barely pulling a little bit. Let's get some more matte medium and dilute it. I'm just making that mixture a little bit warmer in tone that way. I'm going to squirt a little more matte medium onto my palette. And we're just going to warm this glaze up ever so slightly. Now let's show you here on the white card what that looks like. It's just a little warmer version of what we had before. And then let's put that glaze right here. Let's put it right here. And we're looking for that shape and we're going to bring that glaze not to the edge of what we had before. And it can just kind of cut up there um, right around her eyes. So again, well, I'm going to soften this. Now here's another blending technique. You can use your finger and dab the edge of the glaze just a bit. And just kind of get rid of that harsh edge. But now we've added a glaze right up in here. And I didn't bring it out all the way up to the edge of the previous layer. But instead I let it fall back just a bit. That, that technique is called the segmented blend, blending technique. Okay, the segmented blending technique. And then we had the dry brushing technique I demonstrated down there. 
And then I also showed you the dabbing technique um, here as we dab just the edge of that glaze. And you're gonna be using that, those techniques a lot. There's actually a, another technique I'll show you too, um, but that'll really help in getting some smooth applications here. And with this, we're building up a lot of richness. We're building up a lot of depth. Now let's work on her hair, let these glazes dry in the background. Um, and yeah, let's, let's work on her hair right now. All right, so on her hair, um, I stopped off the last time with adding some glazes on the shadow shapes, you know, getting just some of these um, distinct little patterns showing the texture of her hair, the striations, the flow of the strands. Now let's um, kind of fill in the larger area. You're always working out between the larger and smaller areas. And so uh, we're going to want to just fill in and darken the entire mass of her hair. I'm going to take some fresh matte medium. I want that to get mixed in with this cool color of the background. And let's take a bit of raw umber dark as our base. Raw sienna. We'll mix those two together, about equal parts of each. Just off to the side, away from the matte medium. Um, and then let's uh, give it more of a reddish tint, because right now it would be way too yellow, way too goldenrod colored. Let's add a little bit of alizarin crimson to this. That's a strong pigment. And we might need to just add a little more raw sienna to compensate. And then if it's too intense, too chromatically warm in tone, we'll have to add some more raw umber dark to cool it down. I think we need just a bit more raw umber dark just to cool it down. We're using the flat brush, half inch size. This might be actually a little bigger than that. It's a size 14 if you want to be specific. But uh, let's use this and uh, let's apply it. Well, actually, let's test it on the white card first. This is what we've got here for the white card. I think that color will work, but we have more opportunities to dial in the color if this doesn't get it. But let's just go over on top of everything and we'll. We'll just uh, kind of fill in almost everything on her hair, starting in the not quite upper left corner, but below the part. And we just brush down again with the direction of the hair. We're going to switch the brush around, flipping it on its other side. Overlap into the background a little bit. We're going to also paint on top of her this lock of hair over her ears onto the kind of sideburn, whatever it is, a little strand coming down next to her ear. And we're going to bring this up into the top of the hair just a bit. Now we're going to still leave this area a bit cooler in tone. Actually, we'll go into the part a bit, but up there we need to preserve the luminosity there because that's going to be more of a cool color based on the lighting in the reference photo. Um, let's bring this color down into the lower sections of her hair and all the way down. And also um, I'm going to brush it into this section as well. Overall, this should be pretty light, so we don't want to darken that too much, but I think we need just one glaze there uh, to give it a bit more richness and color. And we can always come back on top with some semi-opaque highlights, and it's good to have a foundation to work out of to do that. Now we're going to add a glaze here on the left side because we don't want to neglect that. It's good to add these tones over the whole thing, and it really brings and promotes a lot of color unity. So we'll bring this glaze all the way down into these strands. Let them fade off. Now we're building up just the sense of her hair having a little bit of translucency. All right, so as we do these glazes, we don't have to paint every little strand of hair. We're just suggesting and implying it 
by using these uh, light layers there. And you'll see how that really works and it's uh, a great way to imply realism without having to over detail things. All right, um, now at this stage I wanna work on her face and um, I already have this color for the hair developed and I can use that for her face. Um, so that, that'll work well. Um, I'll have to adjust it just a little bit, but I think in many ways it's going to work uh, pretty well already. All right, let's take the size 8 flat. This is uh, maybe about a quarter inch or a little larger than a quarter inch. And we're going to take that color we just mixed for the hair. And then let's, uh, let's add just a bit of alizarin crimson to it. So just a dab of alizarin crimson that will work into that glaze. And then um, let's go ahead and uh, just add a little bit of a color, some richness to her cheeks in the interior. And I don't like it. I'm going to wipe that away. I thought that was a little bit warmer. Um, let's let's add just a bit more alizarin crimson to the mix. Let's test this on the white card. This is what we have. I think that color is a little better. We're looking kind of for a ruddy brown. So let's apply that to the cheek area. Yeah, I think that's better. And we're just warming that area up. We're going over this whole section. So it is going over uh, this entire area here, um, left of her nose and all the way to the edge. So whereas in the previous layers, we you know, painted just this shadow portion, this little sliver right here that I'm delineating. See that? Now we're painting this entire area right here. And that's not only darkening this left side of her face, but it's also adding some richness in the skin tone. And we, we look at the color and we say, yeah, right there, um, it is a little pinker in tone. Um, we can get away with using this same glaze all the way down to about here. But there, here, up here, we want to get a little bit cooler in tone, so we're going to have to switch the color, okay? Because up there above her eyebrow, it's not nearly as pink. And I'm just discerning that by looking at the reference photo. However, let's use the same color where we see some more pink, and I see that uh, right below her eyes um, in this little shaded area. So I'm just going to add a glaze right there. And I'm not going to bring it out too far. And I'm going to dab the edge of it. This is that dabbing technique with my finger. If you don't like having paint on your hand, just keep a damp rag nearby and you can clean your fingers off. But it does work wonders to dab those glazes. It makes them so, so much smoother. And let's get a little of that pinkish color right above her eye. And in, in, around the eye sockets. Um, inside just a bit. And again, just a bit up here, and I think I already did that. Um, we're going to get a little bit of that color. Um, I don't know if it's going to work for her cheek. I, I don't think it's going to quite be warm enough in tone. Um, so I'm just going to add a little more raw sienna to the mix. Or pull from this part of the mixture that has more raw sienna. That's what we use for the hair had a little more raw umber dark and raw sienna. And I'm going to just add the glaze down here for her chin. So I'm going to overlap this initial glaze a bit, but not all the way. And I want to basically get a little more shading here on the chin with this glaze. And I'm bringing it out just about that far. I'm going to add a glaze underneath 
right here. It's so this whole area of her cheek. Um, right here, I'm gonna add a glaze and bring it out just about this far, a little bit higher than this area here. So it comes up about that high. And I'm leaving this area in her chin. I wanna preserve the luminosity there in that area. I'm gonna also add this glaze um, to her neck area as well. And then just a little bit of it as well, uh, right here around her hair, just to develop a bit of shading. And I'm going to let it go into her ear a bit, but I'm going to leave this area um, there a bit warmer in tone. So I don't want to glaze into that lobe. I'll leave off in that spot. Here, just developing that little glaze right there on the side. And let's uh, also add just a bit of this here in the forehead area. only about that far. I'm just going to use my finger and dab the edge. It's really important to get a smoother application on your glaze. Just dab the edge of it. And then we'll also add a little of this color. Let's thin it out, get a little bit of matte medium, make it more translucent. Okay, we just do that by pulling some matte medium into the mixture and swirling it around till it's all mixed. And then we're gonna add a little of this glaze right here to this um, nasolabial fold area. And I'm gonna add, yeah, so I'm gonna add some of this glaze right here as well. Over on her forehead, we'll just bring it about to that point. Okay, and as long as we go light, we can really adjust quite a bit. Can really adjust quite a bit. So I'm gonna let that go for now. Um, I wanna get a glaze on this little area by her neck, and then also on her back. So let's uh, let's put a glaze right up here. Again, we want to make sure we're using the, the right glazes in the right place. And we're looking at the reference photo saying this color up here is a little more reddish, a little more orangey, so we can put a glaze right there. Um, sometimes you can use the dabbing technique, but if your glaze goes on smooth enough you don't have to so you don't have to use it every time just use it if you need to to smooth out the edge and then I'm going to rinse off my brush and I'm going to get a little bit of uh, raw sienna off to the side bring some matte medium over with just a bit of raw umber dark to show you that mixture right here Raw Umber Dark, Raw Sienna together. We'll squirt a little matte medium right in this area. My palette's starting to get full of paint, so sometimes you have to just squirt matte medium where you're working at. But we want to get kind of a more yellowish tone. And we can place that right here right in this area on her back. And we're just looking, like I said, for that more yellowish tint. And we're trying to isolate the architecture of her back. There's the uh, collarbone, and that's what we're trying to show at this point. All right. Now let's uh, put a glaze on her lips and bring that area up a bit. I'm going to need to put some fresh mat, or sorry, some fresh aluminum foil on my palette. 
something you have to do once in a while just to, you know, make sure you have a fresh mixing area. So I just take a piece of aluminum foil and I fold the corners like this. And then I just press it into place on my pallet, just like that. And voila, I have a fresh mixing area. And the beauty of this is I can recycle this aluminum foil and it's good for the environment. So, all right, now with a fresh mixing area, we'll put down some matte medium again. And yeah, let's add a little glaze to her lips. Take this small flat brush. Um, let's take some pyro red orange or organic red orange. If you don't have that, you can use cadmium red light. Um, and let's just take a bit of alizarin crimson and burnt sienna as well. We'll mix that in so the color isn't too strong. And then we will go ahead and apply this. Let's test it though first on the white card. This is what we have, so you can see that color. And you can see how opaque it is. And we'll apply it right on top of the entire area of her lips. Just want to add more color. And whereas selectively in other layers, we were just isolating the shadows on the lips. Now we're just basically coloring the whole thing. And so that goes on top of the mid-tones and the highlights will be done uh, with a semi-opaque glaze at the edge. And we'll do it towards the end of the painting stage. Now let's work on that top part of her hair and get the cooler tones in there. Um, I'm gonna use this larger brush. It's not my largest one, but this would be the size 14 flat. And we're going to, we're going to take a little bit of ultramarine blue and romber dark and mix that together. Romber dark, ultramarine blue, and then let's uh, let's pull a little of this mixture that we use for her lips, since we have it on the palette, just to warm it up. Uh, but again, we're wanting it to be kind of a cooler brown, and we will see how that works when we apply it. So, what does the color look like? You wonder. Uh, this is what we have here on the white card. Um, I think that will work in contrast to what we have. Let's go ahead and apply that to the top. Because the other tones are so much warmer, this should work. We can always bring it out more with some subsequent layers, semi-opaque layers on the top. That's just getting a little bit of differentiation in the, in the tones. And we can bring that down into the other areas a bit. I think that color actually comes all the way down toward the side here as well. All right. Now, let's add another layer on the background. And we'll keep developing some depth within the painting. Um, let's take some raw umber dark and ultramarine blue, and we'll just put that right on top of this glaze we just did because it, it's the colors are very similar. We'll have more ultramarine blue in the mix for this one, and I'm going to stick with this brush as well. Now that I have enough of a foundation on it. And this is what it looks like on the white card. So it's again getting just a little more opaque each time. Now we have maybe about 30% of 
opaque at this point, 30 to 40 percent opaque. So 30 percent pigment, 70 percent matte medium. Uh, let's go ahead with the upper left corner. We'll start there and work our way over. Here, this is just going to allow us to cut around the edge of the hair a bit more. That's why I'm choosing this brush. It is a little harder to blend, though, because the brush strokes are smaller. So you have to be careful with it to really uh, brush fast. And again, we're going to do that segmented blending technique on the top and not bring the glaze all the way to the edge of the previous one. Try to keep that wet edge. Really keep that wet edge. Have a lot of paint on your brush, and that helps too. And really scrub the paint into the canvas texture. And again, if it starts to get blotched, you just kind of leave off on it. I'm going to actually brush all the way over everything this time. Just do a few strokes to smooth it out. Again, just keeping that wet edge. You can see here what's going on. Just again, keeping that wet edge the whole time. And if you paint over the hair a little bit, it's okay. You can come back on top with a semi-opaque glaze and you can uh, smooth it out. So. You know, we have a couple areas in the background that are a bit blotchy, but I'm not too concerned about it. There's many more layers to go and more opportunities to smooth it out. Let's do a glaze on the other side. So again, we're going to paint over what we did previously, but not all the way up to the edge. And we will develop a little bit of a gradation then with this. Just use my finger and dab that off. That works well. And also do what we call a dilution blend where we dip our brush into some fresh matte medium and just uh, blend the edge of the glaze a little bit. And that's another way of getting a bit of a gradation as well. And we just blend out. So if it's a little streaky, you know, in my case here, it's just drying way faster than normal. Um, you just basically want to leave it be and come back later on and smooth it out in your future layers. I'm going to add a little bit of a glaze to that top section again. That would be this little section right here. And we're going to add a glaze just kind of in the middle of it. Just kind of in the middle of it. Do some brush strokes in the other direction and that's about it it's already starting to set up so we'll let that go um, let's add a little bit of raw sienna to this glaze and a bit of indian yellow and let's just get this spot right here in the middle I kind of missed that before. We'll just develop a little bit of shading right here and just work our way around. And just blend in a bit. So I'm going to leave this area vacant right there because it's a little lighter on that side. Just add a bit of a glaze at the top. If you're going to add more, make sure you don't go over any areas that you just painted or you're going to have some issues. It's going to start digging up your previous layer and making it really blotchy. So I'm being careful to apply this where I did not apply my previous glaze. And I'm just getting some additional um, nuances here for the background because this glaze does kind of flow up, you know, into a shape like this a bit. I'm also going to put this glaze right below her chin and get a little bit more contrast over there. 
and I think I think that'll work for now. I'm going to finish up by adding a glaze um, to this area on her forehead. Um, I'd like just to get some more differentiation between her forehead and her cheeks. Her cheeks are projecting outward. The light is shining onto them, so they are catching more light than her forehead. So we want to darken that forehead a little bit. I'll take some fresh matte medium, put it onto a clean area on my palette. And I'm going to use, I think the same brush I did for the background. We really need to rinse that out super, super well because that color with the blue in it, we definitely don't want that getting into our glaze. So rinse it off really well. Wipe your brush on a towel and then rinse it and wipe it again and get all the pigment out of it. And then we're going to I'm going to take some raw sienna as our base here. I'll just dab it off to the side, pull it into the matte medium, and also some raw umber dark as well. We're just noticing that the colors are a bit more yellowish in that part of her face. And so we're going to develop that tone and we're just going to add a glaze on the top. But again, I'm going to test it on the white card show you what that looks like so this is what we have and i can even hold it up to my reference photo and compare it and it looks like it's in the ballpark so that's what we have and then we will go ahead and apply that over everything so it goes all the way to the edge and then on the top here it's going to go down over her eyebrows and we're going to bring that all the way about to the level of her eye right here. We're going to stop off right there. And that's going to just develop a little bit of shading on her forehead. So now we have this area looking much brighter by contrast. Let's take that glaze though and also um, just add it to this section below her nose and we'll get a little differentiation between the values there. So I'm just going to place it right there below the nose. I'm also going to place it on her chin for that little highlight there. I'm going to let it overlap. I'll let it kind of ride into the lower cheek area a bit. And then let's um, let's also bring it into her neck area a bit. We want to make sure that we have these colors looking fairly uniform. So wherever you have one instance of color, you want to repeat it somewhere else. But you look for opportunities. You don't do it arbitrarily. You look for opportunities within your reference photo um, where those colors are naturally occurring. And I see you know, the yellowish tint a little bit in her back. So I'm just uh, brushing it right here in that area. And let's just add a little more raw sienna to this glaze. So we're basically using just straight raw sienna and matte medium. And we're going to add that glaze right over her ear area. So you can see it's just a little more a little warmer in tone right there. And then lastly, we'll pull a little more raw sienna into the mix so it has a bit of raw umber dark, but mostly raw sienna and matte medium. And then we're going to just use a corner of the brush and we're going to um, add a little bit of shading to her, the wing of her nose. We'll just kind of do a shape like this. So it's going to go on the top of that area. Let's show you here a little better. It's going to go to the top here, and then it's going to flow down. We bring that in. Let's add a bit more shading here to the nose on that side. 
and then we'll also bring this glaze just below the shadow on her eye as well and it looks like I could place just a little bit of it as well on her cheek now make sure that that's dry before you add more to it especially especially excuse me if you row down here in the lower corner and you added a glaze in that section make sure that uh, it's dry before you add any to the higher areas of her cheek I would be remiss if I didn't add a glaze to this left side of her um, her arm we need to turn the form there and get it a little bit darker on that left side and I've neglected that for a while so uh, let's take this mixture we had previously on the palette that we used for the background and work out of that add a little matte medium and then we'll pull a little more ultramarine blue into it um, and even just a bit of alizarin crimson we want to make just kind of a kind of a nice grayish tone and we're using the large flat edge brush this is what we have with our white card you can see that and then let's apply this glaze to the left hand side just like this and we're it's very faint it's faint enough that it's not going to affect the color too much you want it to be very very translucent to so make sure you make that glaze lighter than you think and I'm not going to bring it all the way up to this top edge, but just about there. And I'm going to bring it out maybe about this far. I'm going to brush it a few times just to smooth it out. So brush strokes in different directions. Um, I'm going to add a glaze right here to this area as well. So we're just smoothing this out right here. Um, and again, I'm differentiating between the shadowed area and then the highlighted area on the top. It's kind of like a spotlight effect there. And I really want to capture that. So I just bring this glaze all the way to the edge. And what we'll do is we'll leave this area untouched in this layer, this whole section right here, untouched. And that will develop kind of a highlight and a spotlight right in that area. It'll really help it to pop and it's going to give it a lot of luminosity, a lot of depth in the final painting. To finish this up, I want to add a cooler tone to the shadow, get some differentiation, especially on her forehead. Um, so I'm going to take some raw umber dark and work into that previous glaze that I did on her clothing. And so we're just going to add that. It'll be romber dark, um, a bit of alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and raw sienna. We're making kind of a grayish tint. Let's show you what that looks like on the white card. This is what we have right here. You can see that. So it's just a little bit of a cooler tone. It's got some brown in it, but it's it's um, definitely cooler than what we've done in the past. And uh, let's add that to the shadow on her forehead. Just darkening that whole area. And we're going a little bit past the original edge, but not much. into the eye area just a bit. And then we'll also work into the side as well. It's gonna go below her lip and just a bit past that point into the neck area. Not very far because that is a cooler tone, and I only really see it up in these these areas that I'm showing on the left hand side. 
All right, and with that, I'm going to call this lesson done. And all right, here we're at with our lesson completed, and we've brought the painting to a greater stage of luminosity and depth, and um, just building up the shading all throughout. We darkened the background a couple of times and developed more of a form and a sense of the lighting structure. We also added some richness and depth to the skin tones in her face, her hair, um, and isolated some of the highlights as well on her clothing. So I hope you can see your portrait starting to take shape as well. And I look forward to seeing your paintings. Um, show them in our Facebook group, send them to me. Um, I'd love to see your comments below in this video. Let me know uh, how, how the portrait is going for you, uh, what you think of the class, and uh, give me any feedback. I'd love to hear from you. But I am so excited to see your portrait um, get completed. We're getting really, really close. So I just encourage you to hang with the process. Um, you are going to see um, some major transitions here in the last couple of lessons. I do have some bonus videos uh, that I am going to be recording for the All Access students. I'm not going to be able to include every bit of footage um, in this class. I'm trying to put as much as I can within, you know, uh, half an hour to an hour sessions. Um, but you're going to probably see some shifts in the last couple of lessons uh, where things are really coming together quickly. And I'm going to try to hit every highlight for you, show it as much as I can. Um, but I look forward to seeing your portrait being finished up. So again, thank you so much for taking part in the challenge. Um, and you can go ahead and sign up at realisticacrylic.com to get the welcome kit so you can paint with us. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Like this video, subscribe to this channel for more uh, great videos like this. And then go over to realisticacrylic.com where I have the portrait painting challenge and many other tutorials to help you in your portrait painting as well. All right, share this video, uh, leave a comment for me. I'd love to hear from you. God bless, and we'll see you in the next lesson.